Hey guys, it's Booligan with Airsoft Retreat, BooliganAirsoft.com and Airsoft Insider Magazine. Last week I did a very quick video demonstration of the modifications to my tiny little stubby stubby M4 pistol with the promise of a more detailed review on what I did with it in the near future. Well, it is the near future, so let's take a look at what I did to turn my tiny little stubby pistol into a total BB hose. So I was able to accomplish this decent rate of fire and good performance using the magic of CO2. Now, how am I running CO2 in a little pistol? A little M4 version 2 gearbox equipped pistol. Well, that came because of some innovations by Wolverine Airsoft. Wolverine Airsoft initially manufactured the SMP, the single moving part uh, system, which was a drop-in HPA engine uh, that, you know, similar to the Polar Stars and things like that, that would allow you to turn any AEG into an HPA system. Well, I'm running one of their newest systems, the Inferno system, which is designed for version 2 gearbox, version 2 or version 3 gearboxes. They also have the Hydra system, which is for offset air nozzles, like version uh, 6, version 7, things like that. Um, and the system kits are modular and actually cross-compatible with each other, so you can actually swap them around. But that's not the big innovation. That innovation helped because, well, it allowed me to, you know, run the whole thing in a tiny, tiny little package, especially using the Spartan system, which we'll talk about in a second. But this is really where that magic happens. They have what is called the Storm Ingrip Regulator, which is a very small regulator, self-contained, that fits inside the grip of your M4 AEG. First benefit is now I don't have to have a big bulky regulator. Uh, the second benefit is that because of how this regulator works, it actually allows you to run unregulated CO2 as opposed to HPA. The benefits of that are, first off, it is much, much easier to get CO2 tanks filled in my area than HPA. It's also much cheaper to buy spare CO2 tanks. A spare CO2 tank costs like 15 to 20 bucks. I could fill up a couple of them, take it to the field, and not even worry about refilling when I'm in the field. The remote line, instead of having a big bulky regulator on the tank, the it's just a simple $20 remote line. So instead of having to buy an expensive HPA setup, an expensive regulator uh, to work with the gun, you just have to buy the kit and this specific regulator, uh, which the combo, the kit is 285 bucks for the Inferno kit with the Spartan fire control unit and $135 for the regulator. So in the grand scheme of HPA systems, it's, it's not a bad price. You can still run this regulator with HPA instead of CO2, but the CO2 it, again, cheaper, easier to run, and it's actually more efficient. Uh, they're reporting that you get three times the shots that you would with a comparable size HPA tank out of CO2. And I haven't been able to put enough rounds through this thing to even dent my CO2 tank yet. So we'll see how those claims hold up. Let's go ahead, let's go to the table, and let's see some of the details of this kit. Uh, talk about the Spartan fire control unit, how to adjust the regulator, and a few other things. First thing I like to talk about is the actual um, Inferno unit itself. And I'm not going to be able to see it too well until I take the receiver off, but you can see a little red anodized finish in the Delrin front end here in the gearbox. Uh, installation was a breeze. The thing essentially just drops in, replaces all of the moving parts inside of your gearbox, um, with the exception of your trigger trigger unit gets taken out, and on this model, this is called the Spartan model, it gets replaced with a little chip, and we're going to show it an image here in a second to show it installed. So the install is very, very simple. Just put it in, close the thing up, run some lines, 
Now, when you're running the ingrip regulator, you change the lines out and it comes with a different line. You'll notice we don't have the little adapter. The bottom of this regulator is just, essentially, it's a tank adapter. Uh, you could, theoretically, run a tank sticking out the bottom of that, but not recommended for a couple of reasons, which we'll talk about in a second. The reason I went with the Spartan unit is that it is entirely self-contained. There's no external FCU, no fire control unit required, and all I have, take that off, is the battery line coming out the back right there, and it's run to, I use a very, very, very small, tiny little LiPo battery that fits in the front half of the battery box. So the wires, I actually ran them out the top of the gearbox along the top and then drilled a hole in the top so I didn't have any external visible wires, but that also got rid of my charging handle, unfortunately. But, hey, that's okay. Um, but as you can see, there's no external fire control unit. It's just, you know, a small battery plug. And you program it by plugging in the battery while pulling the trigger, and then you can change what your dwell time is going to be, so the time that it is actually shooting the air, and you can also adjust your rate of fire up to 35 rounds per second, which is what I have this set at because, uh, hell, why not? 35 rounds a second is an absolute blast. Because a system like this is extremely electrically efficient, I can run teeny, tiny, 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 little 7.4 volt, 180 milliamp hour battery. I might accidentally eat this thing. It's tiny and it was cheap and it fits very well inside my little battery box with room to spare for a voltage monitor because these behave a little differently and I don't want to nuke this lipo so I'm gonna have a voltage monitor on there. Um, the regulator is where you adjust the velocity of your gun and it comes with this little handy tool to unscrew and you can see the base in there with a little bit of uh, macro line and the regulator itself. Very small, very, very easy to work with. You've got this little hex screw right here, and that is how you adjust your velocity. You tighten it in all the way, and I believe its lowest uh, pressure output is 40 psi. And you crank it all the way out, and I think it'll go up to 120 or 130. I'd have to look at the specs on that. Um, there's no gauge, but there is a little bit of math. I, I want to say it's every time one one uh, complete rotation is, I believe, 15 PSI, but I'll have to double check the specs on that in the instruction manual. So you can kind of just mess around with it and shoot the gun and see how it actually ends up shooting, seeing what your velocity sets at. Your tournament lock it doesn't really exist, <laughs> but they can put a sticker over it and then when you screw it inside the gun, you can't mess with the velocity anymore because it's, I mean, it's screwed inside your grip. You'd have to disconnect your airline, unscrew everything in order to access it again. So if it's that much, if, if cheating is that much of a problem at your field, A, find a new field. Um, but there are options that they can do, including putting, you know, tamper resistant tape over that to do, uh, you know, a tournament lock. So. In this setting, I was hoping the velocity would be able to get a little bit higher. I was hoping for around 300 feet per second. Um, but with the short barrel and how this thing appears to be working, with the pressure maxed out, I'm still only getting about 250 feet per second. First off, that's fine. I'm okay with 250 feet per second. Second off, my testing is in around 40 degrees outside, 30 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's cold. It's very cold. And CO2 being a liquid gas still is a little fickle in the cold. So we'll see how the testing holds up once this thing warms up a little bit. Um, other thing to note about running CO2 is it is a liquid gas. HPA is air, it's a dry gas. Um, and you need to try to keep liquid gas out of the system. So when you're running the gun, you need to keep the tank vertically oriented. So strap it on your back, mid back, and keep it so that the valve is at the top. If you go prone, something like that, it's not going to be a problem. You just don't want to make a big habit of running this thing with the tank, with the valve lower than horizontal so that uh, liquid can get in. That's why it's important to run a remote line to it because that will act as an expansion chamber as well and will help keep liquid CO2 out of the system. Um, 
But other than that, from what I've seen, the CO2 works just fine. The kit works great. It was an easy install. I love the performance of the thing. And uh, next video we're going to do is me taking it out and wrecking some noobs out at one of our various CQB venues with this thing because why the hell not? This thing's a hell of a lot of fun, so might as well have some fun with it. Many thanks to Wolverine Airsoft for sending over the Inferno kit and the Ingrip regulator for us to test out. And be sure to check out all of my reviews on Booligan Airsoft, Airsoft Retreat, and of course in the pages of Insider Airsoft Insider Magazine. Thanks for watching.